So Qualcomm recently introduced the three new chipsets, namely the Qualcomm Snapdragon 665, the Snapdragon 730 and the Snapdragon 730G. So I know a lot of you must be wondering what all is new this time and what are the changes to be expected. Well, it's Varun from Mr. Phone and I'm here to tell you all about the chipsets and what to expect from them. Right off the bat, let's talk about the first chipset over here, which is the Snapdragon 665, which comes as an improvement over the current budget king, that is the Snapdragon 660. Now, when we talk about the improvements here, the major focus on the Snapdragon 665 has been over to the AI part. So Qualcomm states that the Snapdragon 665 is now using a hexagon 686 DSP, which is an improvement over the 680 DSP on the currently Snapdragon 660. Now, I know that's a lot of technical terms, so let me just break it down to the normal layman terms. Basically, it'll offer you more AI advantages, so that smartphone features, applications per se, will be able to make use of the currently existing AI technologies on board. So you'll get improvements in the overall performance, camera performance, judging the overall lighting situations and everything. Also, talking about the cameras, the Snapdragon 665 now supports a 48 megapixel single camera natively. So instead of the Samsung GM1 sensors, which are 48 megapixel sensors, but shoot natively in 12 megapixels, smartphones coming with the upcoming Snapdragon 665 will be able to shoot natively in 48 megapixels. So that obviously is an advantage. Also, one of the added improvements here with the Snapdragon 665 is over on the GPU department. You see, the current existing Snapdragon 660 makes use of the Adreno 512 GPU, while the upcoming Snapdragon 665 will make use of the Adreno 610 GPU, which will offer you know, decent improvements in terms of gaming. Also, the newer Snapdragon 665 is based on an 11 nanometer architecture as compared to the 14 nanometer architecture that the Snapdragon 660 is based on. If you want to skip ahead of the technicality, a lower size number in the architecture basically results in better power efficiency. So you get better battery life. So basically, if you put the latest Snapdragon 665 in a budget smartphone, you get better camera performance, better gaming performance, a better battery life, and an overall improvement in the overall performance of the device thanks to AI. Moving on to the Snapdragon 730 and the 730G. Well, for the most of it, both the chipsets are completely identical. Well, like I said, most of it. So basically both the chipsets are based on an 8 nanometer architecture and both come with a Cryo 470 octa-core chipset up to 2.2 GHz. The camera support has been bumped up to support 48 megapixels on a single lens and for a dual lens you can now support 22 megapixels. So the major difference between Snapdragon 730 and the 730G is, as the name suggests, a factor of G. The G here stands for gaming and the 730G is basically optimized for better gaming performance. The Snapdragon 730G chipset comes with support for true HDR10 gaming along with select Snapdragon Elite gaming features. So there's that. Also, if you're talking about the maximum display resolutions, while the standard 730G supports a full HD display, the 730G can actually bump up its display to Quad HD. So obviously that's an added advantage. Basically, if you put it in a nutshell, the 730 is aimed for people who expect a overall better performance and a better battery life. On the other hand, the 730G will be for users who want better gaming performance. Obviously, this is all a speculation at this point because it will all boil down to the fact that which chipsets do smartphone manufacturers actually use in their upcoming devices. That said, looking by the specifications, the future of smartphones really looks good. So well, those were the three chipsets that Qualcomm announced today. Which one was your favorite and which smartphone are you looking forward to actually featuring one of those chipsets? Make sure to let me know in the comments below. Also, if you want to see how these chipsets actually fare against the existing competitors in the market, make sure to check the description box below for I'll have links for that over there as well. Lastly, if there is any other query that you have about these new chipsets, make sure to sound off in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them as accurately as I can. Well, that's me signing off and I'll see you in the next one.